Stay tuned to the end of this video. I have a very important update for the channel. Hello and welcome to Gearhead 704. I'm Matt and we have a how-to video for you today. Um, got some issues with Tar Heel Fox. Not sure if you caught the last video, but she did leave me stranded on the side of the road. Uh, on the way home, thought the cluster was all good and the car just died on me. You can see I'm out on the highway right now. Yeah, those are my emergency flashers. Not very fun at all. So let me recap what's going on with it real quick. See, it tries to start up and then immediately, immediately dies on startup. What I'm thinking is I was trying to fix the Dakota cluster here. We went in, we changed some wiring, rewired that and what happened in the process had to disconnect my ignition switch. I was talking to Matt over at Fox Resto. Shout out to them. They always help me out a lot. I get my parts from there. I work with Matt. Uh, he works on Fox Bodies. If you're looking for a Fox Body Shop to work on your Mustang, definitely check them out. We changed that and sure enough, on the way home, it died on me. So I'm thinking it's the ignition switch. Talk to Matt, that's what he thinks. We are going to swap that out today and find out together. I've got a good old Motorcraft switch here. Ford part, good old Ford part. Ford parts usually hold up better, although I've had a bit of bad luck lately with some Ford parts, starter, things like that. But yeah, gonna try this. Uh, the ignition switch that is in there, actually I did change it. It's only been like 14 years. I don't know why it's a problem. Maybe maybe longer, maybe 15. I did change the ignition switch a long time ago, just uh, aftermarket part. So anyway, let's go ahead and walk through this. I don't know if any of you guys have changed the ignition switch before or not, but I figured why not do a little how-to? So let's get started. Now to start off with, I want you to know I'm not a mechanic. I'm not a licensed professional certified, any of that. Uh, so yeah, be, you know, this is just what I'm doing. Use it at your own risk. Before we get started, I almost forgot. I did disconnect the battery and also this is a 1989 Mustang. So I don't know if it's different with different years, but I'm thinking maybe the aero cars are all the same way. So 87 to 93, this will probably apply. Anyway, I don't know for sure, but mine's an 89. But right here, I know we gotta take this off. Uh, underneath, there are three holes. This is the cover. You can see the actual key lock on this side, or you know, the ignition key, whatever you call this. I think this is um, the cylinder lock. Anyway, that, that's not what we're replacing. We're, we're replacing the ignition switch. Anyway, you gotta get this cover housing off. There are three Phillips head screws in here. So I'm just gonna get my Phillips head screwdriver and pull those out, and we'll take another look. I did get that off. Now those screws are a little long, so it takes a little bit. Now that that's off, I also need to get this piece off. And there are two Phillips head screws on each side, one here and one on the other side. So let me go ahead and take that off. All right, I also went ahead and pulled the top part of this collar off. It's pretty easy. I was just able to, to bend it back and, and pull it over. Um, so that is out of the way. Now the part we were trying to change is right here. Underneath there, yep, that's the same one. So this entire switch is what I'm trying to replace. And unfortunately we can't really get to these bolts right here. So this is going to have to come off. Um, and I know for sure that there are a couple of screws back here. These are tough to get to. They're actually not screws. Easier to show you from this side of the windshield, but yeah, there's two nuts here that have to be taken off. And those are really tough to get at. So hopefully you can see it past the GoPro reflection. Normally I have a very short tool to do that. So I'm gonna see what I can work out. Uh, I don't have the tool of Matt, it's a Matt's shop. So hopefully I've got something in there that can just unratchet those and that should allow this assembly to come all the way out so we can get to our ignition switch. Let me give it a try. All right, did find a seven millimeter and a very small ratchet and it looks like, I'm gonna break my car. Looks like it's gonna work here and over there. Yeah, I just might have to get in from the other side but I think that's gonna work. Let's see how the seven millimeter does. That did work. There's a couple other things I forgot though. One of them is there's a kick panel underneath here that does need to come down. I don't know if you call it a kick panel, but this has to come off. And there are a couple screws to do that as well, a couple bolts. Again, I'm sorry about the lighting guys. It's just terrible in here in my garage. There we go. Now you can see a little better. Yeah, underneath here to get this off, we've got that screw right there. And then of course there is one on the other side as well. So. Uh, that's gonna need to come off and then also going to need to bring these out right here, okay? These would be tough, you can break them pretty easily. I know I'm gonna try to get a screwdriver in there to loosen those, but be very careful. You might wanna look up exactly how to do them. They are easy to break. I've gotta do them here on the other side. I'm actually 
It may come in easier off the inside. I don't remember. I'm gonna show you guys how I get them out here in just a second. But uh, yeah, so see, I told you I was a mechanic. I just figuring this out. Hey, at least with a convertible top down, I got plenty of room to mess around with this. All right, I did remember that these actually come out on the inside. So I'm just gonna try to get a screwdriver down in here and pry them loose. But hopefully I don't break them. Usually you, these can break really easy. I wouldn't be surprised if I broke them to tell you the truth. So. Anyway, maybe some time-lapse footage will help you out with this. Actually, upon further investigation, I don't think these necessarily need to come out, but I do think this panel at the bottom that I mentioned does need to come out. I did get that out. Uh, it was just the couple of screws there, um, and then it popped right off. And why I needed to do that, yeah, there we go, because that was covering up. So there's one screw on each side there that does still need to come out. Once that happens, I believe, this piece will lift up uh, and that'll let us get access to the ignition switch. So let's try that. Two things I already told you guys wrong. One is how to take these out. So uh, you definitely do not try to jam it in the side like I was doing. That is wrong. Do not do that. Actually, you know what? I realized I filmed a video on this three years ago with Matt from Fox Resto and I completely forgot how to do it, guys. I did. Let me just let Matt show you how to get those out. Well, a lot of people have problems removing the switches. You get your flathead screwdriver. There's two little tabs down in there, and when I take it out, I'll show you. But what you gotta do is you pull up on this lightly, kinda compress one tab, then compress, you're still getting pressure out, compress the other one, you're gonna notice it kinda pop. Like that. And if you look right here, these are the tabs I was pushing. So you want to do it like that. So you pull pressure, get one loose, do the other. You may have to go back and forth a couple times, but keep steady pressure out. Once that's out, it's still retained on the inside. So the pull, to get that out, you just pull straight out. A lot of times they're a lot stiffer, but you see these right here. But once you get it cocked out like that, you just pull straight out and it may take a little bit of force, but it will pop out. Yeah, so that's the proper way to do it. Don't do what I was doing. But uh, the other part is I actually don't think they need to come out for this job. I was getting a little stuck here getting this out and you can see now I can move it pretty easily to get to where we're trying to get to, which is is right there. Daggummit, this lighting, there we go. Yeah, you guys can see it. So I think those are fine to leave in. There was one bolt I had not pointed out to you guys that needed to come out, and it was right here. Again, super dark. This whole video is gonna be me complaining about lighting, and yeah, I don't normally film in my garage, but I'm stuck, guys, I'm stuck, so I have to get the car going today. Anyway, apologies, let's try this again. Yeah, there was one more right there on the edge, all the way to the right that was stuck. So there's two on this side, one on the other side. I didn't point that one out. I also used a seven millimeter, don't even know if that's the right size, but it's gonna allow us to move this out of the way now and change this ignition switch. Now that I can pull this out of the way sufficiently to get to those bolts, there's also a connection down here that's plugged in to this part. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that down. And it, yeah, there we go. Disconnected, I actually have, I had a part just fall out. That was a fuse. I think we put that fuse in there for the dash. Anyway, you shouldn't have that. I think that fuse might be blown, but anyway. I disconnect this. Uh, my fuse went in there, so I, I'm pretty sure that's, yeah. That's where my fuse went, fell right out. Okay, yeah, the fuse I put in, again, for my Dakota cluster, wanted to see. Um, I can't quite tell if it's burnt out. I'm gonna take a better look at it. But uh, yeah, this disconnects, unplugs. This should be all that you have. And then I'm gonna be able to unscrew these and pull it out and put in the new switch. So let's see how that goes. I think I finally found something to get, to get these off. Take a look, close look at this. I think these are Torx bits. I honestly, I just had it in my uh, toolbox over there. I think that's what these are. And I found the one that seems to fit here. Sure enough, that is going to work. So that's what you need. Um, hopefully you probably have yours connected to a screwdriver, make it a little easier. But this is all I had. Uh, it's gonna break it loose. It was the second biggest one, for whatever that's worth. Getting highly technical here on GearHit 704 today, but man, I just need this car to go. I've gotta get my daughter to work today, and Tiffany has the Suburban. So yeah, we need Tar Heel back on the road. It's actually been, that worked great by the way guys. <laughs> it's actually been a minute. Uh, I don't think that fuse is blown by the way. I think that fuse is good. There we go, hey. The old ignition switch, hopefully you guys can see that, is out. It's actually a Ford part. Huh. 
No wonder it lasted so long, it says Ford on it. Let's go ahead and see if we can get the new one in. One other thing I do want to show you guys why I think this may actually be the problem as well. There's a little bit of gap there. You see that? Hear that? Right there. A little bit of gap. Here's the brand new part. There is no pop or gap right there. So yeah, I think that's it. All right, so this video is going splendidly. <laughs> Anyway, reinstall, reverse. Just do everything I said in reverse. Wait, wait, don't do that step yet. I know I just told you to do that in video, but I made a mistake. And so watch my mistake first and then figure out, basically align the rod, the, the rod for the ignition switch. You gotta do that. So anyway, I'm about to show you that in the video. Don't end up like me and mess up. I don't even know if you can see me right now. <laughs> all right, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do it all in reverse well let's find out i'm gonna go ahead and before i put everything back together let's just see if you'll even crank up get the battery back on here find out right everything else is just trim and whatnot i plug stuff in so let's see let's see what happens here hopefully i don't break anything oh man well so far it's locked that's not a good sign literally i must have messed something up because oh that's incredibly hard to turn. Okay, I did something wrong here. Shouldn't be this hard to turn. No, no, something's wrong. Not sure what I did. I definitely installed that ignition switch incorrectly. So if it won't turn that easy, it's binding. I did something. Let me figure that out. So I think I forgot to mention something very, very important. You guys see this little thing moving back and forth down here? Moves forward, moves backwards. Yeah, that's uh, that's supposed to go inside the ignition switch. And I noticed I had a little bit of binding when I installed it. I probably didn't have it in the right position. So I try to put it on right here. It's basically stopping it. If I move it forward, I can get it on there more. So I'm gonna have to figure out the right alignment on that. I believe it goes in that hole right there. So, but you know what, at this point, <laughs> I'm not really giving you guys good advice. I realize that. So I probably need to look it up and figure it out. Man, this is a fun video. You know what? This is just my journey and my working on my car. Definitely do not use my advice on yours or uh, I might break something. Luckily I haven't yet. We'll see. <laughs> After a little bit of Google searching. Yes, this right here, this hole has to be in alignment with the rod that I was pointing out here. So for me, I'm gonna get them down about right here and see if that's gonna line up well. I think it is. Let's find out. Nope, I just gotta get it in alignment though. I see it needs to go forward back a little bit. Let's try this. Oh, that looks like it's gonna be pretty good there. Nope. But that is the goal, trying to line that rod up in that hole, hole right there. Okay. Let me see if I can do it. I figured it out. This little piece in here I was talking about, that hole, that is what you have to line up. But you've got to get it in line with this, and you got to realize that when you get it in line, you also want the bolt holes to line up, okay? Right there at the top. Once that is done and secured, then you can turn the key back and forth, and this little part here in the center is moving back and forth, and I did not realize that, but that is what's going on. Um, it definitely has to be in there, has to be aligned, and you want the same time the bolt holes lined up. Then the rod will move back and forth freely like it should uh, with everything lined up. So that's what the issue I hit there. Nothing was very clear on that, um, at least from what I saw. There was nothing pretty clear to show me that. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's, hopefully that helps. Anyway, let's try it. All right, so this time we are much better now that I actually aligned the rod. Look, it's turning like it should. Can even get the key out. Yeah, that's how it should go. So now let's go ahead and try it. Oh, gotta get the battery cable. You know, I should have known on this ignition switch that it wasn't right because it was really binding when I was installing it. Okay, so now let's see. And that's not a good sign. Haha! <laughs> New ignition switch did not fix the problem. Still the exact same problem. So I really got no idea. 
actually, what's causing it. Because it started up, and it just dies. Okay. That wasn't my issue. Anyway, that is how to replace the ignition switch. Go ahead and just redo everything in reverse, and uh, should take care of it. Should take care of it. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Anyway, I gotta figure this out. Okay. Probably be a different video title now. <laughs> All right, did figure out a little bit more. Nothing to do with the ignition switch, but basically my problem, right here, uh, this is uh, the five amp circuit we set up for the dash, the instrument cluster, to work. And I put a new fuse in it, and guess what? The car runs. Well, I could probably show you guys that, actually. Okay, I've got a new five amp circuit there. Five amp, uh, I don't know, circuit. <laughs> what do you call it? Fuse, my goodness. Guys, bear with me. Got a new five amp fuse there and watch this. Runs fine. So, something is blowing that and I don't think it's the dash because the dash actually lights up or the instrument cluster, I keep calling dash. This actually lights up regardless of whether that five amp fuse is in there or not. So maybe I did something in the wiring when I was rewiring the instrument cluster, uh, I'm not sure. But that's another problem. So that's why I'm not gonna put all my stuff together, but hopefully if you're in this video trying to change your ignition switch module, uh, hopefully this helped. And if it didn't, uh, well, I'm sorry. But <laughs> that's gonna do it for this one. I hope, boy, I hope I get this figured out before Foxtoberfest. Foxtoberfest is coming up. Uh, I'm filming this before. And otherwise the car's not gonna be there. So that would be sad if Tar Heel Fox isn't there. So hopefully I figured it out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. I really need that. Uh, it's been a little tough out there lately in YouTube world. If you're stopping in for the first time and you just wanna laugh like me, please subscribe and we'll see you here next time on Gearhead 704. Okay, it has been about three and a half months since I filmed what you just saw. Obviously Tar Heel Fox did make Foxtoberfest. That's why I was talking about Foxtoberfest. Oh, look, I've even got my little badge there. But yeah, what the issue is, I wanna fill you guys in. Uh, it ended up being how the dash was wired. Matt and I had rewired it, and because it was having issues, it was shorting out. And the way that we did the rewiring was not good. I was blowing that fuse. You saw that five amp fuse I was blowing, and that was because there was too much power going through it. The way we rewired the dash was incorrect. Matt came over, helped me wire it correctly. It was just like a simple mistake. I was actually the one doing the wiring, so I probably didn't listen to his instruction or something. But yeah, that took care of it. Since then, no issues. So really, I did not need to replace the ignition switch, you know, but uh, since I did, just show you guys, it's dark in here. That's a dark video, but everything is put back together. And that was the issue. Uh, I haven't blown any fuses since. It was wired up to the door chimer, and my door chimer hasn't worked forever, and uh, it kinda, you can barely hear it, now I can't hear it at all. So it kept blowing that circuit, probably the door chimer did, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, that, that took care of that. So I didn't need to replace my ignition module, but like I said earlier in the video, last time I'd done it was, I don't know, over 10 plus years ago. So, you know, it's fine. I, I left the new Ford one I put in, and that was the issue. We just rewired the dash incorrectly, and prior to that was the door chimer. Okay, so that's the main part of the video, but what about channel? What's going on with the channel? I said stay tuned to the video. Well, I'm putting this in this video because honestly, it's not the full video I wanna make yet. That is gonna happen. Uh, I am gonna have a full update video coming on, I don't know, just everything YouTube related. Uh, I don't know why I'm pointing at the car. I'm, I guess because the Fox Body YouTube channel. But I'm putting this at the end because I'm wanting to let you guys give you some update. If you noticed, I didn't upload a video last week and that's the first time I haven't uploaded a video on a Wednesday in over four and a half years. The only guys I know doing this regularly, the Fox Body thing regularly longer than me, uh, Five Tussin, Foxcast Media, and Brutal. You know, I was doing this before Infamous Project, before Castle Customs, before Neo Mustangs, although Neo was doing other types of videos, but not this sort of regular vlog format. And, you know, Blue Media, I forget if I mentioned him, but a lot of the other guys have been doing this longer, and to be honest, uh, I'm getting a little burnt out. If you noticed, I changed the format of the channel in 2022, last year. Had a lot, well, I, I didn't upload two videos a week anymore, I only uploaded one, and they were much more centered around car reviews. I actually started changing this format a little bit towards the end of 2021. And the reason why is they did a lot better, and it takes a lot of time to do these videos, and the plan was to do less updates and how-tos, 
and do more of those, but still do my stuff in the background and then have like a bigger video covering it all. My stuff being Nemesis, uh, the coupe build. So if you've been with the channel a long time, this will make sense. If not, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but a lot of you probably aren't even watching. You know, how-to videos don't get a lot of views. So what did get a lot of views is the car review videos. I got more views last year doing half the uploads, right? I uploaded 52 times versus 104. Uh, I got more views <laughs> with, with half. So what does that mean? That means that people like the car review content more. That's why you saw so much of it. Uh, it did well. And if I'm gonna spend my time on this, then I'm gonna put out something that does well. That, you know, it's more rewarding, more comes back. So with all that said, uh, I have some burnout, guys. I have some burnout. Um, not much progress was made on Nemesis last year. And there's a lot of issues going on in my personal life that I haven't really got into, and I, I don't know if I will, I'm not ready to yet, but that affected a lot of that. So right now, I do not know what the channel looks like in 2023. Uh, I know I'm putting this video up, obviously, and I've got at least two more filmed. Uh, I do have, in case you missed it, I do have the Maker's Garage wheels and the tires came in. So that will be happening to our Hill Fox here. Probably should have mentioned that already. I put a short up about it. Um, shorts are killing it. So that will be up at some point uh, for sure. And so I've got at least two or three uh, that will go up. So I think I'm gonna still make videos, but I think the regular content is done and potentially the channel is gonna take a different direction or uh, I'm just gonna stop. I'm not sure on that. If I make that decision, I will let you guys know. I will have a full video about it. Uh, for now, I'm just being real with you, kind of struggling and last year was really tough for me. You know, I think with everything I spent on Nemesis last year, everything I spent in total last year, I think the channel lost about, I sold merch, things like that. Obviously I get ad revenue on the videos, but still overall, I wanna say I lost around $16,000, right? Um, you can look at it another way and say I spent so much and I didn't have to spend that much if I was gonna do this hobby anyway. It's not that I cannot afford to lose it, I look at it as an investment. I'm investing in my brand. The brand's gonna get bigger, and this is cool stuff anyway, right? I mean, I love having these fresh meats, the wills. So yeah, in case you guys know, this stuff is not all donated to me or Nemesis or anything like that. I, I don't get, usually I don't get parts just given to me, that kind of thing. So that's why I'm sort of questioning what I'm gonna do, and my kids are getting older as well. I wanna spend more time with them versus going every Saturday and trying to work on a vehicle that, uh, you know, is just taking years to build. So anyway, no def no definitive decisions. Most of my followers aren't even gonna see this, but if you did see this, I just wanted to be real and let you know what was going on. So hopefully you can kind of understand this. Uh, I still enjoy making the videos for entertainment and they're fun, but I guess what sort of changed was that uh, in 2022, it became more like a job for me and, and not a profitable job at that. So, uh, I just have to figure out what I'm gonna do and I'll let you guys know and now I'm rambling at this point. So yeah, uh, so that's gonna do it. Uh, at least you finally know what was the problem with Tar Hill Fox and how I got fixed with the instrument cluster for those who cared, which is a very small amount. Uh, if you are still really watching, I really do appreciate you. I know I do have some people that have been there for a long time. You watch every video. Honestly, that means a lot to me. Uh, I've really invested a lot of this over four years. So 2023, we'll see. But uh, definitely some more content coming. You gotta at least hang in there to see the Maker's Garage stuff put on the car. And Nemesis will be done one way or the other, you know? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish it or if I'm gonna have to do something else with that. I just don't know right now. Uh, and I'll let you guys know when I figure it out. So that's gonna do it for this one. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're stopping it for the first time and you made it this far, well, you gotta subscribe. You clearly like me because this is not the typical content most people like to watch uh, in this kind of video, and that's it. Thank you guys. We'll see you here next time on GearHead 704. No grap, no, no grap. What's a grap? Oh boy. <laughs> blooper, blooper. No grappa here, grappa, grappa. What's up? Thank you guys for watching the end of the bloopers. Love you guys that do that. This whole video is gonna make me, me come. <laughs> it's gonna be me going crazy. Then secure them, and then the key, or the prop rod, not prop rod, ha, prop rod, that's for the hood. So, uh, go ahead and just we're playing. <laughs> wow.
Breakfast of Champions. 